And here's a picture from my sky globe, which shows you I'm not lying. Now, it's pointing out exactly what the impact site points out and the date in the year points out. Now, you can actually find this fits to not only connect us to uh, the 4th of July and Independence Day for America itself, but this doesn't work if you go back 20 years or 30 years or 100 years. It only works now and it won't work again after about 10 years. There's a very narrow window where this works. Now, this is getting back to the whole picture that you actually have a pentagon which shows, you know, by its geometry how long the procession lasts, 360 times 72. Then the pillars of heaven and the Ouroboros or the Milky Way, which gives us a reference point to time. I'll get to an epic story in the Old Testament about a dude whose name in Akkadian means the sun, Samson. And uh, Shamash is the word for the sun. This is the basic root for the sun. He was a Nazarite. So his hair was never cut, but eventually it was due to his, his own error. But <clears throat> it's messianically oriented, and it's also a time signature. Here he's pulling pillars down. He's pulling the system of how time and space actually operate, at least according to us. And the temple he's in is Dagon's temple. Dagon is half man, half fish. A Dagon, a dag in Hebrew means fish. And amazingly, here's another picture of some of the priests of a Sumer and in Babylon wearing these little fish hats. The reason for that is, as you have the fall equinox, and actually that's between Leo and Virgo, the spring equinox, the beginning of the calendar, which started in March in antiquity, which means Mars, this is where it's going to happen in uh, 2012. So the sun rises between Pisces and Aquarius. Here you have the same sort of motif, only in a stylized way. On the popes of Rome, city of Mars. And here you have the same idea again. This is supposedly Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent. Here's a face of a man inside a serpent, or interestingly enough, Quetzalcoatl means a feathered serpent. In, uh, in the uh, Inca cosmology, Viracocha means the sea of foam. And in a lot of ways, the whole uh, uh, Milky Way as a serpent and also as a celestial sea or ocean is being referenced here. This is that dividing point when he, he is supposed to return. And then again, you have the connection between this ancient uh, symbol from Aztec society and John the Revelator. Actually, this is Jonah. But the whole idea of the end times where Jesus says, the only sign you're going to get is the sign of Jonah, where Jonah spent three days in the belly of this fish. Well, he's not just talking about his death and resurrection. He's also talking about a time signature that looks forward to the actual revelation and revela uh, the actual um, resurrection of all those who have uh, uh, inherited this eternal power from God himself through the act at 33 A.D., there's a little closer version, a little easier way to see. Here's Pisces and uh, Aquarius and the spring equinox at 2012. It's about resurrection. It's about this idea of life after death. The only thing that separates a philosophy from a religion is the version of what happens after death. And these guys are preparing a dude for burial. But the reason they're in attendance with him is because the symbol that they represent is that point in time when this guy is supposedly supposed to wake up again from the dead. Here's Jonah, who's a, you know, etymologically related to John himself, the revelator. And he's being spit back onto land 
um, by a fish. The emergence, he went into the fish, and then he comes out of the fish. So what you're having is this idea of those points merging and then drawing apart again, which is exactly what you have when the sun moves between that margin, which only occurs, which only will occur in this narrow point in time, which will be culminating in 2012. Now, Plato's actually said the geometry is a, is a study of uh, the eternal. Well, that's a pretty intense statement, but that can be proved because you get to the uh, geometry of the merging of the highest platonic solid with the lowest platonic solid. It's, it's trying to explain something far greater than just uh, uh, numbers. A point is basic, what you start out with. A line, of course, an extension of that. Now you have two dimensions. And the simplest, the very simplest geometric figure is three-sided, so it's a triangle. A circle is the highest geometric figure because that line, which represents, is represented by pi, is, is, is irrational. It goes on forever, as far as we know. The decimal places, decimal places of pi go on forever. So it's talking about something that's eternal, and this is totally finite. So when you actually have these two symbols that represent mortality and immortality, finite and infinite, in three dimensions, that's where you have the superimposition. And that's why 30, 33 and a third, or one third, and these numbers are going to show up over and over and over again because our whole time system is designed around it. And the end of it is this number. We're talking about moving from mortal to immortal here. That's, that's pretty heavy. So I will actually be able to get away with saying that right now. It astounds me. But I am. Here you have a phoenix over Phoenicia, where the word comes from. Here you have the circle of the, the Leviathan or the Ouroboros, represented in our zodiac. I mean, I'm sorry, representing our, our galaxy, our Milky Way galaxy. And then here you have a line, 33 degrees, right over where you would talk about Galilee, where Christ performed most of his miracles, where he was stationed here in Capernaum. Here's the uh, Sea of Galilee. And you have the configuration symbolically laid out ge geographically. And if you look again at the symbols in total, Jung talks about this as representing two things, death and resurrection, the beginning and the ending. The same thing with the phoenix, they're, they're redundant. They say the same thing over and over again. To actually find out that they're oriented in space from our perspective in a way that can say, this is a certain time we're going to approach and that we've never been to. And all four quadrants of our zodiac are saying, this is when it happens, this is when it happens, and this is the main sign because this tells us what happens.